Now some of our more, more uh, cultured brethren, some of our more high and mighty falutin brethren around here, they don't believe in evil spirits. I had a family come to me one time and they said that the spirits were showing up in their house. They were having all kinds of problems, rattling, noises, apparitions, and all this stuff going on. One woman called me from up in Sevier County one time. She said, Preacher, I was standing before the mirror, and she said, I looked into that mirror, and there's something standing behind me. I looked around real fast. wasn't anything there. I looked back into the mirror, and there it was. Then all of a sudden, it appeared over here in the doorway. She said, I got real interested in what was going on with this thing, and I checked with the people that lived there before I did, and they had the same thing happen to them. Oh, I didn't mean anything. Spirits don't exist. Evil spirits don't exist. You're, 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 just, you're just ignorant, preacher. Well, the Lord Jesus was ignorant too then because he spoke directly to them and he cast them out. Now, I got this email two days ago, and this is the first one of its kind that I've ever gotten. And, folks, I get a bunch of emails. Listen to what I'm about to read to you because some of you in this house today may very well be doing the same thing this woman was doing. Listen to this. She says, Last year, I had started getting into ghost hunting shows. And one even had a medium that was ghost hunting. Anyway, I was watching it constant. And one night, I'm standing in my kitchen. I had put my girls to bed and was about to go to bed myself. And I hear a voice speaking in the living room, clear as day. I searched high and low, but found no logical explanation. This was just the beginning, she said. I had a constant feeling of being watched and an evil presence in my home. Among other incidents, I was terrified as were my children. So I borrowed a Ouija board. <laughs> Used it twice, nothing happened, and I put it away. Now, this lady is sincere. She was ignorant. She's not ignorant now. She was ignorant then. She says, I put it away, which I now know not to touch. I had recordings with heavy, deep breathing. This was the start of my awakening. I would also feel something climbing in bed every night. That's got to be a harrowing experience. So finally it came to me to pray and to pray for angels of the Lord to come down, protect us. As long as I prayed every night, the activity stopped. I have grown so much and have a relationship with Jesus, and it continues to grow. I'm reading the Bible, of which I tried before, but couldn't understand it. But now I read it every night, and I love it. So why can't I understand the Bible, preacher? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. When he has come, he'll guide you into all truth. Now, these ghost shows are all over the Internet. They're all over the cable TV. And there's more of them popping up all the time. They're everywhere. Here's the thing about a demon. Demons are very vain. When you start talking about them, they come around. If you give place to the devil, he'll step right through that door. He will, bring, he will come into your home. Some of you may have already had this happen, and out of, out of fear of ridicule, you don't want people to talk about you, you don't say anything about it. But some people get hooked on these ghost stories, these ghost TV shows. And what you're doing is allowing something to come through your mind. Remember the mind? Remember that if the mind, which is the thinking capacity of the soul, if it's being fed by the Holy Ghost, you walk above them, you walk in victory, you walk in power, you shout hallelujah. But if the mind is being influenced by the God of this age, by the spirit of this world, it'll suck you right down into its world. A lot of Christians live in, a, in what we call a, uh, a denial. A lot of Christians believe this can't touch me. Because I'm a Christian. A preacher told me one time that a Christian cannot be possessed with a devil. You can't be possessed in the classic sense that it can take complete possession of you. But it can flat take your body and influence your soul. And it can put you in a state of bondage. And the only way to break that bondage is by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It can't touch your spirit, dear friend. Your spirit is born again. You're following me now with a new birth? You realize how important all that is? These things are real. And I know the power I'm up against. This is not a game. This is not a joke. It's a real thing. 
So if you're watching this stuff on TV, what are you watching? What are you, what are you feeding into your soul? What's, what's your mind full of? What are, you, what are you loading your life with? That will kill you in this world. It'll take the very life out of your heart. It will. It'll rob you. You'll get to go home to glory a little earlier. <laughs> Amen. That can sure happen to you. We have access to the Father. That's communion, Romans chapter number 8. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. You cannot condemn a saint of God that is born again. You try it. Let me tell you, let me give you a, let me give you a ludicrous thought. Think about this for a moment. I can come to you and in the name of Jesus, if there's some demon in you, some demonic spirit in the house or going on in your life, I can say to that thing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the blood of Christ, you were defeated at the cross. You have got to leave. And it's not between me and that demon. It's between Christ and that demon. And it has to go. It may fight. It may hold on. But it has to go. But if I came to you and said, in the name of Jesus, I'm casting the Holy Ghost out of you. That's ludicrous, isn't it? You don't cast the Holy Ghost out of anybody. You know why? There is no power higher than the Holy Ghost. Right? When well, the Bible says there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, that means that nothing can condemn you. Nothing can come against you that hasn't already been defeated. Amen. Amen. And you've got communion with the Father. Do you realize, folks, that not one time from Genesis to Revelation does it ever say, not one time, not one time, that anything apart from you can have communion with God? Isn't that amazing? And the third thing is this. We have protection through the blood covenant. We are sons of God. Amen? A son of God. Protection through the blood covenant. There is a barrier between you and and hell and Satan. You know what that barrier is? The blood. He can't cross the blood. You remember the death angel that came through at midnight? There's a lot of controversy exactly who that death angel was. That's a different story. But they give you something to think about this afternoon. Who was that death angel? I just took it for granted. Well, no, that's the problem. We take a lot of things for granted. But here's what the death angel could not do. It could not cross the blood. Ha, isn't that good? And the Bible said he hath washed us from our sins in his own blood. What did he wash? My spirit that was born again has literally been cleansed, perfected, and sealed by the Holy Ghost of God till the day of redemption. And I leave out of this house today saying this to you, by the grace of God, I'll get my soul in check and I'll do the praying I need to do and I'll come for my high priest and pray for him to do what he needs to do for me, for my soul to walk in victory and my soul to walk in salvation every day of my life. And by doing that, it brings the body into subjection. And that's the best. If you bring it into subjection, that's the best you'll ever get from the flesh. <laughs> Period. Get it into subjection. It'll never be holy. It'll never be sanctified. Just get it into subjection. That's the best thing you can do with the flesh. Father, in Jesus' name, I've covered a lot of ground, Lord. I hope something I've said in this house this morning will help somebody clear up some things, maybe bring some conviction, maybe help them understand the difference between salvation on a daily basis and the new birth on an eternal basis. I pray this in Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen.